Welcome back to another episode of the Fair Sports Update. I'm your host this week, standing in for Rob Bentley. I'm Harrison Watt. Thanks for joining us. Here in the Fair Sports Update, we're going to talk a little bit of Bulldog hockey and Bulldog volleyball. We'll start with Bulldog football. Offensive line coach Sam Parker here. And uh, unfortunately, we, we were not able to get Bulldog soccer in on this one because they're still traveling back and getting ready to go to the final four. I'm going to throw you a curveball. I don't know how much of it you got to see, but uh, how awesome is it to see Fair State soccer in the final four for the first time ever? Uh, you know, on Friday, we have our, our uh, special teams meetings for football. I run the field goal unit. We didn't do anything field goal related. We watched the penalty kicks for their uh, regional final championship. So we were really pumped. Uh, all the guys going crazy. Um, everybody in athletics is behind and rooting and supporting uh, women's soccer right now. We're all pretty excited about it. You guys are, of course, part of a program that has uh, been that far and further in the last couple of years. And uh, took a step back in that direction last weekend with a win over Davenport, 41-7 the final. And uh, how happy were you with the effort? Because it really seemed like despite some really challenging conditions that that was a really clean, oh, put-together yeah. game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's always difficult to play a team twice and to beat a team twice. And we've been fortunate enough to do it. Uh, this is our third time doing it in two years. So it's, it's not an easy task, and given the elements and stuff like that, but there's a, there's a, there's a level – of pride and 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 uh, and, and that in a sense of you know importance that our guys put in to a cold weather game, a snow game, and a playoff game. So the the level at which those guys compete is unmatched. And the way they practice all week, the way they prepared, I mean, you watch some of that stuff in the highlights. Like you're probably confused at how well our guys are able to keep their footing and do some of the stuff that they're doing given the elements. So let's talk about it. I mean, especially when you see the first touchdown pass here coming up that Malik Mitchell's going to throw. The visibility seemed actually to me, other than the footing, to be one of the biggest problems. And I'm really not sure how Malik saw Des Libertas as far down the field as he did. Man, Malik just sees the field uh, differently than anybody else. And with the weapons we've got, like C.J. Jefferson, who's got the ball there, Des Libertas, who catches this one. Um, I mean, it's it, it, as long as he can just facilitate that ball to them and they can see it in those conditions, uh, then life is really good. Uh, unfortunately, Davenport blocks the PAT. It didn't end up mattering in the long run. But you know, with that visibility, uh, of, of course, comes the footing issue, too. It just seems like your team is so well equipped for these conditions. I know you've played in them a lot, but it, it seems like other teams that play in cold weather areas, Davenport, Grand Valleys, haven't been more as ready for this as you guys have. Yeah, we're, you know, we don't have an indoor. We don't have a lot of glitz and glamour stuff. And the renovation on our sports complex the last year has forced us that if we want to practice, we're outside. And guys don't care what the elements are um, when we're outside. Uh, the, you know, the, the field conditions as it is right here and how messy and dirty and nasty it is, that's how it was for us all week. And, you know, our grounds crew is doing an amazing job of helping us um, keep the field clear. But there is a, I think, Tuesday, it came out of nowhere. So they're, you know, shoveling and paving the way um, around campus and everybody on our team has a shovel and we're clearing off the field ourselves. But just practicing in it, it's our performance zone. It's where we're most comfortable. Mario O'Brien makes a really nice move for that touchdown. We're going to see a little bit more of uh, Malik Mitchell on the ground. Good to see him healthy and moving with his feet as well. That's such a, an important element of his game that uh, you guys haven't been able to use as much of this season. No doubt. And, um, you know, as good as he is on his feet, he's better with his arm and being able to get the ball to, like, Cam Underwood there. And how he stayed in bounds on that play is beyond me. Or like, on his feet. Yeah, like, just either or. And it was right before the half that we got that one. But, uh, you know, I, you know, Carson Gulker, another quarterback for us, and Jesse Rivera, uh, you know, I always say that we've got the you know, probably five of the top half quarterbacks in our conference play at Ferris State. Okay. So it's an incredible honor to, put, you know, have a Q and a B behind your position name at Ferris. Here comes a pick six from Vince Cooley, and, and that's a great play. And, you know, one of the things that's interesting is you guys are able to create the turnovers in the bad weather. But this is weather that lends the turnovers, and you guys didn't turn the football over. Yeah, we were very fortunate because the previous week against Wayne State, we had like five turnovers and two fumbles. So, you know, our skill made it a big point. Guys like Marcus Taylor and uh, Brandon Childress and, uh, you know, these older guys 
and veteran leaders really hammer that point home. And then you get guys that are young and upcoming, like Brady Rose, former Mr. Football and Mona Shores alum, and who's able to make guys miss like that and coming into their own during this playoff stretch. You mentioned Brady Rose and, and the next man up mentality uh, has been huge. Obviously, a lot of injuries uh, on the mm -hmm. outsides and just in different yeah. spots on the field. But it, it really hasn't seemed to matter. You guys are, seem to be playing some of your best football now at the end of the season. Yeah, one of the things that we do that's really unique uh, compared to other programs is we rotate bodies at every position, including quarterback, which is insane. But every position, we play a lot of bodies throughout a game. So you get towards the end of the year, um, where you're saying, wow, these guys are emerging or these guys are coming into their own or whatever, it's because they've logged, you know, hundreds of snaps throughout the year and now it's their time to get the ball and make somebody miss with it or, you know, getting into blocking or, you know, being on the D line and making the big sack. So we always hit our peak performance rolling into the playoffs, or at least that's our goal. Pittsburgh State up next for you guys, mm -hmm. uh, a team that's undefeated, a 35 nothing win last weekend. In their quarterfinal, uh, maybe what do you know about the Gorillas? The Gorillas are good, man. The Gorillas are good. I, I, I'm a big fan of Pitt State. Uh, they're in Kansas, and they won their conference, which is a legit conference, the MIAA. Um, they are undefeated. I think when we, the national ranks, they're fourth and we're fifth before heading into the playoffs, so it's a top five matchup. And just looking at their defense, they're good, you know, across the board, they, you know, they play hard. And, and our guys are really excited for a big time Thanksgiving matchup. You know, it's two heavyweight teams in the country that are squaring off this Saturday. You don't know how many more times you'll get to play at home this year or how many more games you really have at this point. Nothing's mm -hmm. guaranteed, but uh, knowing that this could potentially be the last one at Top Tagger Field, uh, do you feel like a sense of importance just to protect that home field one more time here this week? I, I tell it to the, the offensive line, I, you know, every time that we get in that meeting room, be thankful. This, is, this could be the last time that we're all in here together. You know, be thankful and, and really appreciate this week. So this week is a little bit unique. Everybody else in campus goes home for Thanksgiving. We'll be here on Thanksgiving Day practicing at 10 a.m. And, um, you know, though I let those older guys know this could be the last time that we're practicing on this field. You know, and, and we really appreciate and keep that into every game. And every week that we get to extend it, we're a little bit more grateful and a little bit more appreciative of it. So for those guys, yeah, they're, you know, they're coming out like it's the last go around no matter what um, every week of the playoffs because you never know. And the, when you have that mentality, you can secure games and move forward with it. So they're ready to defend top tagger. Well, Sam, thanks for joining us here this week. Congratulations and good luck this week against Pitt State. I appreciate it. Thank you. That'll wrap it up for the football segment of the Fair Sports Update. We'll bring it back, talk Bulldog hockey up next.